has something uh, insightful to say, we will bring it up in the cast. All right, so let's bring up a couple of points that people are reminding me of. Season four begins in February, right? Season four, whether you're in open, pro, or anywhere in between, begins there. But signups for the season four placement tournament is ending tomorrow. They are ending tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow night. And that means if you don't have five, you can't do it. What's a placement tournament, I ask you, Clay? What is it? Uh, it's when your team is way better than SIVA Open, and you don't want to deal with that, so you play in the tournament, stomp everybody, and get automatically moved up to main, and then you're going to go ahead, stomp the main competition, and then you're in COP the next season. So, boom. In, in the words of the UFC, it's time! Okay. <laughs> We're finally here. You're watching SIBO TV. I'm Cotton. My partner is Klops. It is the grand finals for SIBO Intermediate. This is Elogic versus Cap Infinity for both rosters. Let's take a look. Bizo, not Bizo. Lucid Truth, War Angel, point fifty eight, and Ghost, right? For Cap Infinity, Pretty Boy Floyd, K Side, Graphic, Mac J, and Candyman. Two of which that Clay has pointed out as somebody you want to be looking out for. It's a split to be. Candyman will move down dark. He'll be a distractionary or a diversionary, excuse me, a diversionary tactic to get two people close to the door. You can see Graphic and Mac J setting up. They'll nade probably to push somebody out of the catwalk position. They'll set up the 3 2 split to be. Here comes the flash. It's an obvious take. It's got to be a textbook hole for the Counter-Terrorist. First shots fired. Kappa Infinity gets the better of the site. Clears the site without a single casualty. One shot in the back. That's Mac J. Three left for the CTs. Biz Bizzo, not Bizzo. <laughs> Losing Truth and War Angel have to retake. There's nothing to lose, so they'll definitely try it, but they don't have a flashbang, and that's a mistake, right? Not being an A player with a flashbang on a B retake is a buying mistake. For that's a necessary buy in this day and age for Counter-Strike. Here's the last kill. Kappa Infinity takes the first and presumably at least one or two more. And that was just a great round by Cap and Infinity right there, you know, going in uh, with that 3-2 split to B that we talked about with the smoke and the CT spawn. And then, uh, I mean, the entries were phenomenal. Uh, you know, the two guys in it playing in B right there had to do a better job. They didn't trade out anybody on that entry. I think uh, Mac J actually died from one of the mid rotates, but uh, you know, they got to do a better job of holding that site if they want to uh, do well in this, but that's probably going to net uh, Cap and Infinity with another two. There you go. Here's the Bison spray down from Pretty Boy Floyd. Two kills, one apiece for Mac J and Pretty Boy Floyd. Ghost finally takes one down and makes it at least a single rebuy. They'll charge through these doors and they're already doing so much damage. There's the pre-fire spray down. Point 58 is getting hit from the other side and this one's going to get cleaned up real fast unless 58 does something. Now, I, Clay, I, I said this, and I think I think you would agree with this. The three-two split is something that everybody knows is coming. Everybody just they know it's coming, and and you got to rehearse that as a team. The fact that it worked on the first round when there was no tricks or anything like that is a bit concerning, if you're illogic. Yeah, I mean, I think you know the first round it might be a little bit harder to deal with since you don't have any uh, you know grenades or flashes to help try to you know delay the the mid push to be on that but uh yeah i mean once you see that smoke go down it's pretty obvious that they're going to be doing it so the, the two guys in b should have been prepared and waiting for the push to be coming oh look at well this they're Americans. stacking up trying to surprise everybody but it's not going to work here comes the spray through the smoke mac j has two and Candyman another that smoke was too obvious as they try to be aggressive and charge through the dds they ran right into the meat grinder bizzo and ghost waiting on the other side of the door now knowing that their plan has been foiled now this round comes down to a few choice shots one left it's bizzo he's behind the dds he's got his usp he sees a couple heads past him and if he waits for a case side to there you go here's a gun to grab for yourself misses the headshot three rounds for cap infinity we're onto the buy rounds for the cts admirable move but it really really got punished yeah i don't know if i really agree with the uh the eco rounds that uh Illogic decided to go with right there. They kind of they seem to be like throwaway rounds like they just want to get them over with and then get on to the buy round uh, Not really a lot of thought with that rush to a and then you know five man stack in the mid But uh, ooh, he's uh, with a nice op shot right there That's gonna definitely put the round in their favor here and uh, good good smart play buying that up 
Right, their first move got picked. Candyman has lost it right in the spawn. That's a that's a good turnaround play. So yeah, our, our chat's being a little bit uh, harsh, right? They're saying that, uh, you know, what level of play is this five man here? Trying to say like, I would call a better strat. Maybe you would, right? Those are pretty poor eco round strats, but Elogic is good at shooting. You can see it in their crosshair placement. You can tell that they're prepared and those kind of look like throwaway rounds and throwaway rounds, Clay, they happen at every division of play. You can see it all the way up into the pro division. You sometimes see throwaway rounds for the pros. Here's the spray and entry. Graphic lands one, two, one trade thus far in the round and a minute 10 left total. Ghost may peak mid, but he will just miss the opportunity to see somebody. Point 58 is in lower. He's cut off the rotate here and he's in really great position as long as he waits here. If he lurks, he'll get a kill. He's got one right to his left. Shoots Mac J in the back. He doesn't know that there's one more graphic waiting for him. And if graphic lands a shot, he does. He'll even it up again. Another shot. There's Ghost finally capitalizing on his earlier peak. One left. It's Pretty Boy Floyd. This one's all but over Clay. And considering how expensive his gear is, I wouldn't even tell him to try to clutch this. Yeah, I mean, it's a tough situation. You know, with three counter terrorists left, you can pretty much bank that there's going to be one and B, one and A. Fight going down right there. Exchange going down. I'll let you take it away, sir. Pretty Boy Floyd has War Angel stuck at right under the platform, right by Elevator. He takes a shot in the leg, a second op hits him. I don't know how he took two so quickly. Maybe it was an AK that hit him first and an op that finished him off. Yeah, um, I think the, the the B player knew he was there, so he came down a little bit as one was trying to get that spray on. But yeah, I mean, good setup right there by... Uh by E-Logic right there with three members left, knowing that one guy was left, you know, spreading out the their, the, the players, one man over in A, one in B, one in mid, with the op in mid, and then, you know, once they got side on him, they were able to, to like you said, take him down without doing those unnecessary rotates. So is this a B-Rush? It is. looks like a committed B-Rush, and a smoke in front. Here comes everyone through the door, turn 58 has to clutch. He's pretty much lost his teammate. He's gotten two. That's a good enough trade for him. Here's the rotate cutoff. Graphic does his job, brings down another. They'll plant safely. Graphic, as long as he stays here, has totally, totally sealed this off. He knows that Bizzo's right behind that door. Bizzo decides that he won't be bothered by that, turns around, ops him, and will try to clutch. It's a one-on-two. He's got the chance. It's If you can't be down by three, I think he's going to actually go for this. Here's a smoke. It's not really going to be useful for all intents and purposes. We know exactly what's going on. Clay, that's a great smoke. I love that pop flash made commonly. Uh, accessible by recent frag videos. Bizzo knows one's in the back of the platform, loses that shot, loses that battle. It's down three now for Illogic. Yeah, looking at the money, I don't think Bizzo should have went for that. I mean, he had 30 health against two members uh, defending the site, which would have been easy, and he only had an op. I don't like entering B uh, with an op. I feel like it's not as strong anymore as it used to be. Um, but yeah, I mean, he probably should have gone with the save right there, and now they're going to be forced to be on an eco round, and uh, their eco rounds in the past were not too successful, so we'll see what the, if they try to do anything different here. Well, let's focus on the positives here for a second. That uh, that that rush B seems like a pug strat, right? Uh, I can't believe that you would use that in a, a, in a high-level game or perhaps a grand final game, but I think the, the unconventionalness about it, I, that's a terrible, terrible conjugation <laughs> of word, but it totally worked. It definitely worked. Yeah, it did work. And look, I think this is a smart play by uh, Kappa's in-game leader right now. I think they know that they're on a save, so they posted one up in B and uh, just told them to wait for the pushes there, which is exactly what happened. He picked up one. I don't know if he's going to be able to see the one here on the left. Great economic awareness, knowing that this is the round that they're going to make some suicidal pushes, the CTs are, that is. And this is the round that you're going to want to be waiting for them. Double nade onto the platform. War Angel never even got to shoot. He gets naded out, loses his life. Here's the flank. Blue. Oh, Bizzo makes a huge play, brings it to a two-on-two. -two. There's guns available, and if they if they even this up, they've got, a, they've got a great chance there. A couple of nice shots. Pretty Boy Floyd down to 60. He'll nade the flat. There's a touchdown nade. No clutch because graphic. Lays down the law, two down immediately. Cap Infinity has 5 1, and they got the bomb plant for just a little bit extra cash. Yep, and uh, not too bad of an eco round. They forced uh, three rebuys right there, so that's going to do, do a pretty good put a pretty good dent into uh, Kappa's uh, money right there. And if you do look at it right now, they are quite a little bit low. There's a couple of people still looking pretty healthy. Still no offs being bought on Cap Infinity, and uh, Bezo actually didn't have enough to buy one this round, so that might affect their play a little bit as we see the split. Looks to be pretty standard setting one to be to see if there's any type of pick or push. And I'd like to point this out, Clay. Still. We are looking at 1.6 split. Look at this. 2-1-2, two, two, no elevator or no swing man. It's a, it's a genuine 2-1-2. Two, two. A it pure 2-1-2. Two, two. That's, that's rare these days.
it is rare. I don't know if I necessarily agree with it, but uh, they're going with a graphic. Nice entry right there into Long, and that's going to expose Long uh, quite easily for these guys, especially if two playing in B, they should be able now, to Now look, it. look, look, look. Look at this mini-map. It's split evenly down the middle. Two Siphon teams that have to cover the entire map. They're split down the middle by the terrorists who have pushed through. They're going to jump down and jump into the elevator, and because of that, they've really thrown away their advantage. Now, graphic really kind of brings it back and makes it a much more even affair, but that could have lost the round for them. Point fifty eight and Ghosts. P90 and M4A1S. P90, Clay, seven rounds in. I uh, I can't agree with that buy, but, you know, if it works for him, it works for him. I don't agree with it at all with either, but looking at the stash, I think they were, he was team. Never was mind. Like, Never yeah. mind. <laughs> Graphics the last one left. He's made big plays in the past. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, Ooh. he logic hits the falling headshot, and he clutches the round. You know, if you let it go to a 6-1, that's a huge deficit, but 5-2 is much, much more manageable. So yeah, that P90 buy, uh, looking at his money, like I said, he was at $250 uh, at the, after they bought. So I think he was just pretty much buying whatever he could at the mo at the time because uh, his team needed to buy at that at that round to get the uh, to try to get the lead back. And uh, someone actually made a comment, Silencers, I didn't know you could put I thought you could put them on or couldn't put them on CSGO. It's actually a different gun. It's the M4A4. Uh, you could either use that or the non-silence version, the drawback to the silence version is you get less ammunition, but uh, you get the silence gun. So. There you go. Lucid Truth bounces a flash behind him, doesn't blind himself. Mac J was, however, blinded. Lands that headshot and makes this contest an early four on five. That's a great way to stop an entry there because clearly they wanted a spread pick. They're looking, if you look at the map clay, at a default here. Everybody's all over the map. They were just kind of looking for that first entry and they lost their first battle. They did, and Mac J is one of the people who's uh, been doing quite well. Actually, yeah, he's, he, he, him, Candyman, and Graphic have been uh, doing the best here on Cap Infinity, so that's a major asset lost for them uh, as they have to try and retake one of these sites now with this 2-1-2 hold that we've been seeing. A high flash, Candyman will try to blind the site. It looks like it's going to be a reverse. The bomb is in bombsite B's hallways, so we don't know that they're ever going to commit to that catwalk. It's unlikely. Here comes the B, flash, and charge, two entries. No good. Bizzo cleans one up. They, oh, actually, the bomb carrier did live. That that kill was on the other side of the map. It's down to a two-on-two. -two. Couple wounded players, but mostly even. Number three and number two, Lucid Truth and War Angel, now retaking from the same window. Graphic's going to get an early kill. No, he loses that one. War Angel's reflex is just a little too fast. Touchdown nade. One-on-one -on -one pretty Floyd versus Lucid Truth. He, re he withdraws smartly. Lucid Truth knows that he's in a bad position. Picks up a flash. Flashes in. Will come in after his flash. It doesn't. It does not flash him at all. He does does clutch the round, another clutch play by the counter terrace. Round after round play, four rebuys. You're not really gaining too much of an edge. No, and I mean, good job by the counter terrace here doing two clutch rounds in a row. Uh, that defense in B was weak once again. I was on a ghost perspective there as they entered, and uh, they threw out the smoke and then threw it, proceeded to throw out flashes. And I was watching ghost, and he didn't even bother trying to flick the flash. <laughs> Little bit of a mistake there, and uh, that's actually what got him killed. If he would have flicked that flash, he would have actually been prepared, and they would they would have shut down that that take a lot easier, and wouldn't have been able to you know have the terrorists force so many rebounds right there. But look right, at that Bezo with a monster off the it seems to be an eco round here. Two two trades thus far is actually heavily in favor of the counter terrorists. They've recovered an AK. Oh, Biz. Oh, making his presence known. He will not give up that mid even after the round had started. You're absolutely right, Clay. I think that uh, I think an art form that gets kind of lost on on lesser skilled divisions is the the art of holding onto a bomb site. It's you 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 practice all these strats, you practice the executes, you're in the bomb site, everyone, you know, throws confetti, we did it and it looks good and our strats seem sound and then and then nobody rehearses what do we do when we hold on to the site. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll talk about that in a second. Here's uh, first shot here. Bizzo's still at mid, and he could land an off shot. He's looking right at dark. Uh, 58 was right behind. He brings down Mac J. It's one left. It's Case side, who is now stuck in a really, really bad spot. Offer in front. A man at cat pushing him. One in dark. Turns around at the wrong time. 58 cleans him up. The counter terrorists are now within one. Illogic, after starting out really poorly, have just been phenomenal. I like what Bizzo was doing right there. He had the op. He could have gone for the op shot, but he decided to just, you know, do some sh do some shots with his pistol and uh, provide a little bit of distraction right there. Get him looking towards mid, and then uh, point fifty eight just came in and shot him in the back for a nice easy kill right there to finish off the round. And look at this. E Logic has, uh, you know, they're coming back here. It's four. Does five it to four does now. it worry you at all that they keep running down dark when Bizzo um, keeps hitting that op? Yes, oh my god. It does. Bizzo obviously should not be tested with that op unless you're, especially just running down the dark, getting a nice easy kill. 
There is the cleanup job. One left, it's graphic. He may get a bomb plant down. No, he'll retreat back into the hallways. If you've got an author there, you've A, you've got to smoke him. You've got to push him off his position. We, we used to talk about this all the time. We'll, we'll talk about it next round for sure. You've got to push him off his position. If you don't push him off his position, he's going to destroy you, especially when you're in a little corridor like Dark. It just happened. It's so frustrating to see. It is, and I feel like the, the mid-smoke is like something that everybody, every team sh should know, and it's one of the easiest things to do. You know, from T-spawn, you just toss it right over, and it, it lands in the door, right? and it pretty much gets rid of any type of hopping you can do uh, down middle. So if they're going to be doing that, they definitely got to be smoking for themselves. All right, we've got a clutch man. He's he's made the around the world plant. Our number eight is who we're specking. He's going to have one up on his left, and he doesn't get that clutch, unfortunately. Lucid will clean him up. It's all tied up. 5-5. Five, five. Graphic has been playing exceptionally well so far this game. If anyone would have clutched it, I, could, I would have thought it would have been him. But yeah, like you talked about, you know, I wonder if we're going to see Bezo picking up some op kills here. He's uh, He's got to be feeling pretty confident, which means if Cap Infinity can save up some cash, they could probably get an op and counter pick him. If you want to see a graphic representation of what a comeback looks like, hit Q, Clay. Look at that. Total damage suddenly equalized by the ninth round. Oh, yeah. Bezo smoked, but it's a poor smoke, and it... it, it... Uh, it's a little bit surprising that a team in the grand finals doesn't have a secure smoke that guarantees a mid smoke they, If they have a gap there, they're gonna allow themselves to run into serious problems later on But it looks like they're okay for this round Candyman will push up through the catwalk Nobody will be above him, but this is a slow building strat and they've got the bomb carrier in the lead and that could prove to be a fatal mistake K-Side lines up a smoke. He's got to know that there's a skybox Close, but okay. He didn't hit it just just in time bounces a pop flash. It may flash he won in the site, but Graphic needs to line up with his teammates. If he hits this headshot in the pit, they've got it. They're entering into B. Here comes the rotate. Look at the minimap. All the CTs are scrambling. One in the site at Goose must hold on for his life. Oh, a TK. Really, that just happened. K-Side has one of the Goose. There's the kill. Down to a three on three. The retake is happening as the T's plant. So this is going to be poor timing for them. They'll really have to scramble to hold on. One in CT. One at long. Another heading toward Cat. It's a simultaneous retake, exactly what we like to see. Mac J sits on the platform, waiting for the first man to peek. It will be Ghost. They're all going to come at the same time. That's that's good practice. Touchdown and a cleanup. You could not have done it any better than Illogic just did it. Yeah, and I was actually a little bit worried that their 2-1-2 uh, hold right there was going to bite him in bite him in the butt right there because they did start working Cat right there. And if they do see that they're only they're only playing one man on Cat, that could be a little bit dangerous. Because, uh, you know, it's it's weak, and if they could just get the smokes and flashes like they did, then they should be able to take Cat quite easily. But that man holding long and that TK kind of screwed up Kappa's uh, chances right there. So we got a couple people asking in chat, what stream is Cold versus Exertus on? It's on on this stream right after this. Coming up, it will be the match that I think everybody's waiting for. The heavily build Complexity versus Exertus Grand Finals match. Lucid Truth nades into DDs, knows that somebody's there, it looks like. He's just spamming relentlessly, knowing that somebody's there. And he does find our number seven man, Mac J. He's bringing them down to about 62. Three man mid hold. This is the common look that you see at the higher levels of play. They are looking to get a split on to B. It's a very common look, and Bizzo is now trapped in CT, refusing to push through the smoke. The number of flashes makes it exceptionally hard for Ghost to hold on. He gets traded out. 1 1. Graphic gets it. Graphic has one right behind him, and he gets shot in the back. Bizzo got the better of him. He's coming up to the DDs, and if Mac J doesn't turn around, he's going to get off in the back. They've seen him. Bizzo will not get the shot. That's a beautiful two tap. Pretty boys, boys. Saves that plant. Two left for both teams, but ah, man, the T's are really weak. Here comes the re-entry. Early kill and a second one. Lucid gets a double and they'll pull ahead by two. Cap Infinity just seems to be having trouble holding onto the side here, but that was a good setup by uh, by the Logic right there, and I think uh, hopefully Cap Infinity is starting to realize that they're still employing the 2-1-2 setup here, and if they do that, then the mid to B push is going to be that much more difficult because you're going to have that extra man in B and the one man in mid in Biza who is doing very well with his op, and he, he did like a little bit of a ninja move right there and went through the smoke after he heard them run by, and then he got behind him on a better angle, was able to get one, uh, which helped him out a little bit there. The 2 one 2 practically begs you to be hitting A, because if you clear a cat player, if you, if you clear a, a flat player, there's no one else there. There's, you know, that person's going to be a long or in CT. If, if they identified this, if the in-game leader of Cap Infinity saw this, maybe they would lean that way. We'll see if they do. Mac J knows that Bizzo's there, who's been playing aggressively at the DDs every round. They push him out and they'll rotate back. Look at the minimap here. All T's now moving toward mid. The 2 one 2 still very much intact, but the number one man 
Bizzo has dropped back to about the elevator depth. He'll be trying to snipe through CT spawn at a distance away, probably at the dumpster. Here's a slow setup here, a smoke in the eyes of the T's. They'll be waiting for that to dissipate before they go. Probably a one minute mark, a timed play here. One at blue dumpster, by the way, behind Lucid Truth. Lucid hits the first shot and a second. Beautiful three burst, has one behind him, gets taken down. Candyman has a kill, another one. Never mind, he could not land it. It's a three on two. Mac J had a chance to even it up, but 58 may make this a three on one. He does. Mac J is right behind, cleans that shot. One on two. Mac J is backing up. He's got one on the platform and he's got one coming quickly behind him at the catwalk. No kill there. He's got to know. He's got to know. Have the awareness, Mac J. Never mind. That's a kill. Or illogic. 8 5 and this half suddenly should be going the opposite direction. <laughs> suddenly decisively illogic. And and you feel like it should be the other direction, you say. Yeah, uh, we do know it's a it's usually nine six for the terrorist uh, side of the map. Uh, Cap and Infinity, they've had opportunities here and I think they're just kinda of blowing it a little bit, especially with the fact that they've seen the two one two split and they're not abusing A like you said. I mean if with the two one two, the main thing you gotta worry about is that mid player, which Bizzo is actually very good with the op, but if you just smoke him out, you should be fine and then you just overwhelm the guy and cat and you still get in the problem. Yeah, yeah, I definitely would agree with that assessment. We've got too much action down to get too much into it. Bizzo's got a, a bead on that box, and if Mac J makes the error of stepping too far to the left, he's definitely going to have a hole punched right through him. War Angel Nate to the back. It's a two-man retake with one following close behind. Oh, a random. That was really an AD-AD AD headshot over the top of the one single. Oh, Lucid Truth had no idea where that man was. Still got the kill. One left. He's dead. Bomb defuse, sure to follow. 9-5, and Cap Infinity faces an absolute must win on the last round. And another round where they get the bomb plant, but then the retake from uh, Logic is just too strong. You know, they're using their nades and they're entering together effectively. Um, one thing that Kappa could do, especially in the B site, to try and stop that is get a smoke down on the double doors. I haven't seen that done yet by them. And you could even smoke the window if you want to. Uh, make it even harder for the CTs to get in there. But they're just trying to rely on their aim to stop the CTs from entering. And so far, it's not really working. The theme of the match is entering the sites is very, very good for Cap Infinity. It's it's something that they're clearly good at, they've rehearsed. The hold of the site is something that they clearly need to improve upon just a little bit. And we are going over notes, right? The basics of holding the site, counter flashing to make it to make it harder, to let the, the bomb timer age a little longer, to uh, to not charge into open doors against offers, that's a bad thing to do. And uh, and to smoke out certain certain avenues for retakes. And that's that oh bomb gets dropped at long and Suddenly, there's just, it seems like there's no hope for this last round. Candyman has to face off against five. There's a dropped player, by the way. There's a dropped player for Cap Infinity, so we might be seeing a pause here soon. But yeah, Candyman's the last man alive, which uh, he seems to have been struggling a little bit this game from what oh, we saw previously nice. and what we just saw there. So, I mean, Caster's curse, you yeah. know? Well, he's got 50 health. He's charging right for the bomb. 58's waiting for him. Here's the encounter. No kill. 10-5. First half, Illogic leads by a lot. That's a great half. Thank you for watching Sebo TV. Some of you may be seeing a commercial in just a second. And for the rest of you who are sticking with us, thank you all for joining us tonight. You guys who are constantly clamoring, you'll need to know that Complexity versus Exertus is after this game. We'll be definitely covering that one. Don't you worry. Thank you all. If you do enjoy our work, follow us on this channel. Follow us on social media if you'd like that. All those links are below. And uh, for those of you who, uh, who are curious about free things, yes, there are free things. Don't you worry. Did Mac J drop while he was alive, or did he die and then drop? I didn't catch it. I, that's a good question. Why do you ask? I'm just, just curious if, uh, if that would have played any part into the round uh, being different. Um, but yeah, I'm wondering if... I doubt this is going to be live. I'm wondering if they're going to, if he's dropped and he's going to come back, or if we're going to see a sub. I wouldn't expect to see a sub because, like I said, I think Mac J is probably one of uh, one of Kappa's better players here. But um, so far, it seems to be Graphic and I believe Mac J were were top fragging for the team. So uh, Graphic's been doing the majority of the work. And like I said, you know, Candyman is one of those players to watch out for. He went off last game, but uh, this game it looks to be he's having a few problems here and there. Let, let, I mean, I'm really, really happy. This is the first time I've seen chat in such a long time literally talking just exclusively about Counter-Strike. How to, how to hold spots, where to hold spots, is this a good place, do I use this smoke? This is amazing. <laughs> I'm not, I, I see no trolling, I don't see a Razor Spangler, though I did just technically ask for it. Um, 
I I need to take a screenshot of you guys. This is this is remarkable. Anyway, everybody clearly... coming together to discuss the game and how to how to be better at it. Yeah. Now and now we need to get the Kappa guys on our friends list to just give them a point. Like throw throw a flashbang to stop them. Throw a flashbang. <laughs> <laughs> We're clearly waiting for the fifth player, and yes. uh, I'm I'm gonna minimize really quick, Julie, just to check the clock. About 20 after, we're still good on time. I just want to make sure that we're not uh, missing the match that everybody keeps asking about. The uh, what? What was that again? Like the uh, some team named Complexity, I think. And, oh, I thought it was like uh, Homeless or something. Exertum? Exer is it Exertum? Exertus. <laughs> ah, got it. That one. <laughs> uh, how's my? How are my acting skills? Uh, great. Right. Great could use a little bit more of the a uh, little bit more tears. A little, little uh, <laughs> draw from your experiences. Think of the saddest thing you've ever seen. Oh man! Hmm. Don't actually. That would actually. That might have been, been my gun game performance uh, earlier. <laughs> yeah, you guys like hang out with us. We start. We started to do a, a bit of a pregame show for our, our larger matches, and we uh, invited all of our viewers to come play a uh, gun game with us. We raffled off a bunch of slots in a in a game, and we did three rounds before we started casting, and uh, we did not do well. We, two viewers. <laughs> one of won our and, one of our casters did win a yeah, round. So one caster, one one, and uh, two two viewers won the other two. Yeah, we, we'll, we'll get you guys. We're coming to get you guys. <laughs> Getting a note from our producers, please don't threaten the viewers. Don't threaten them? <laughs> what did you say? I said I'm coming to get you guys. Uh. <laughs> I didn't actually get a note from our producers saying that they I am just trolling them. Okay. So we had a giveaway earlier for the for the people who did participate in that. We gave them a Zowie PRF gaming mouse pad, but we also told them a bit about a very large giveaway. A very, very large giveaway that we may be doing tonight. And it might be a GeForce. 660 Ti graphics card. I want. I want it now. Can I have? Well, you are not eligible, sir. I am gonna log on in another account, <laughs> and you will never know. Okay. Yeah, except I, for when you when you be like, yes. I mean, uh. Oh, yeah. congratulations! Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So I think we'll have enough time to finish up this this map here but if uh if cap does come out with a win here i don't know if we'll be able to see the second game um just due to the time constraints and constraints and the main match starting in 40 minutes so hopefully they get their fifth and there he is mac j has reconnected we should be going live any second here to see this uh, conclusion to this match yep so it was 10-5 at the end of the first half Here's my guarantee. I'll give away this mouse. I'll, I'll not mouse pad. Uh, I'll I'll give away this uh, this graphics card as long as we can have the the academic Counter Strike conversation continue because I I'm I'm really enjoying it. It is nice. I think I, I see the ready coming. I'm waiting for a confirmation here. All right. So you said you had a 10-5 first half on the CT side, Clay. Give me your second half prediction, just purely prediction. On for on, just second half. Yeah, on a total of 15 rounds. Oh man, it's really. <sighs> if Elogic comes out with the pistol round, then uh, I think they'll probably be able to make short work of this and uh, win it out. Maybe five in a row, maybe lose one. Um, but if it goes the other way around, then I'm going to probably stick with my 16 12 prediction. All right, we had a restart and a second restart, and here comes surely the third. It's still Sivo TV. I'm caught in my partner's clops, and Cap Infinity is facing off against Illogic here in the grand finals of the Sivo Intermediate Division. It's been a 10 5 affair in the first half, and Kappa Infinity is trailing five. Now they'll start their comeback trail or fade in into the night. We'll see in just a moment. Give me that, give me that half prediction, Clay, one more time. Um, I said 16-12. I think that the terrorists will call. Ooh, never. What is Bezo AFK? Another crash. Not live. Not live. One of us crashed. I. This game. Hmm. This this game. Right. Illogic versus Cap Infinity just seems like it's just been snake bit. It does. It does. I hope we don't have these issues with the main match here. But there's the restart, so we should be going live now. There we go. Live for real this time. I'm not gonna do that same intro again. That took like serious, you know, preparation. 
Eh, he is gone. Not live, not live. Let us know when. Oh my god. I can't see chat for some reason. It's very odd. It's probably for the best. They're not saying anything nice about you. Oh man. <laughs> so yeah, like I was saying, if uh, if if he logs and gets the pistol around, I think they'll probably be able to sweep it and just finish it five uh, with a 6-0. Maybe losing one or two rounds. Uh, but if it goes the other way, then I'm going to stick to my 16-12 prediction. Yeah. I, I can't really dispute that anymore. I, I you know, my, my prediction is long gone, I think, uh, in terms of the blowout or anything like that. Uh, so, we'll see. Carl from Kurt Rambis Fan Club is now in here. Now, Kurt Rambis Fan Club may even be in SIBO Professional next season, but as it stands, I believe they're in May. Oh, they've already been moved up. I was going to say, take a look at your future competition, Carl, see what you think about the field, but maybe he'll never actually play these teams. Yeah. <laughs> we should be live this time. What do you think? Live? I think it's live. They're buying out. Yeah, and people are moving this time. All so. right, let's see our initial splits. The bomb seems to be whoa, just kind of piddling around in spawn and takes a shot to the chest. Lucid Truth hits, uh, excuse me, takes a hit down to 55 health. It's a 3-2 split. It looks like a B split. We'll see if the same strat works for this team that worked for uh, Cap and Infinity in the first round. So we have a, looks like... A 1-2-2. Two, two. Yeah, Mac J will be playing deep underneath CT spawn, waiting. And he'll probably get smoked out if the strat works like he thinks it will. Mac J, I think he wants to charge through the smoke. He'll be looking for everybody if he does. If he just comes out, looks at people in the back, he'll have easy kills. He doesn't do it in time. War Angel comes in. 2-2 two, two trade thus far. Three alive for both teams. Bob plant happening now. War Angel takes a shot and misses it. Tandem retake looks okay. They're going to use every single portal of entry. That's the window, the door, and the B tunnels. If they do this together and use a flashbang, they'll be in good shape. There's a flash. It's not a pop flash, but it does blind everybody. Candyman is wasting a little bit of time. He let his teammate die, so it looks like a solid hold for your logic. It looks like Candyman is pretty much out of luck. Yeah, looking at the trajectory of that flash, it looked like it went down to the back of the site and it only blinded... Uh, the one guy who was in the very back of the site, which uh, was but probably... But sometimes that's, sometimes that's enough. You can you can kill that guy and fall in yourself as a CT into that corner. He kind of, yeah, he kind of came in a little bit too late, though. His team started going in, and the other two non-flash terrorists were able to get those kills. And so it kind of kind of wasn't effective there, uh, unfortunately. So. Yeah, Logic takes the first. They will force an eco around here. A lot of five sevens on the field for Cap Infinity, and you know how how wow, excuse me, you know how five sevens are able to engage at a distance. Maybe they can land some early headshots. Graphic wants to do just what I said. He misses his chance. He'll give away his position. He'll drop back. K side has the next opportunity. P250 eco round headshots are quite common, but not for him. Not this round. Two deaths. And three deaths, actually, and all CTs thus far. The fourth one may be Mac J. It is the last one left. Is a 5'7 wielding pretty boy Floyd. He lands a kill the round. There you go. Forced rebuy. Everybody knows where he is. He's at long. He'll be looking for exits here. I'm going to go to our number one man, Clay. I just wanted to point out his uh, his KD right now is uh, is a 1-0. His ADR stats look great. And I wanted to point out his actual ADR when, uh, when we have, oh, there you go, execution kill there, and another, oh, he's got goodness. a triple, you know, they're going to hunt him, but it's not really going to be too effective if he's gunning them all down. I wanted to point out the holistic stats of the first half, but those have been erased thanks to the restarts. So, Come on. can you get Spam it? it. No. Oh. <laughs> Either way, forcing three rebuys, I thought that round was going to be a complete loss for the counter terrorist, but then Pretty Boy Floyd came in and forces three rebuys. Actually kind of, uh, you know, saves it a little bit. Um, so the terrorists aren't going to be that far ahead monetarily, and uh, that's going to make it 12-5 now as the score in favor of the logic. It will be that. We'll be into our next one. It will not be a buy since they didn't force enough rebuys, they didn't get a kill, or they didn't win a round. And it's going to be one gun on the field for Pretty Boy Floyd. He has a UMP, but Clay, there's a mistake here. What's the mistake about having this UMP by himself? Um, <laughs> he is all the way over in long A by himself. Yeah, nobody can recover this gun if he goes down. It's a very risky play here and a risky charge by Graphic, who probably could have pressed the advantage of having a man advantage by playing conservative after his teammate took down the first 
He loses it. Mac J does a good job bringing down another good trade there. Candyman's in the smoke, knows that Lucid Truth is right there. Can't pick up the kill. Three T's left, two CTs left. Now Pretty Boy Floyd wielding his caramel UMP. Wow, nice. Brings down, an, I believe, a AK wielding Lucid Truth. Two left, one in the site, and one all the way back on back platform. Land his headshot, Pretty Boy Floyd, and you got a real chance here, but not and he's standing by the door looking at DD is now contemplating whether or not he's coming through. Pretty Boy Floyd's really not making an attempt to hide his presence. He's very loud outside and he loses his life three rounds for your logic. All pretty easy ones. Looks like we're on to the buy. Yeah, not sure why uh, Pretty Boy Floyd didn't go get that AK and CT spawn. But uh, I mean, looking at those eco rounds compared to uh, Kappa's eco rounds on the last half where they just kind of rushed around as five and, you know, did throw throw I mean not Kappa. Uh the logic eco rounds. They did the throwaway rounds. You you realize that Kappa, you know, they know how important those eco rounds were and they had to try to rip them off, so they played their positions and waited patiently and they actually did pretty good. You know, they forced a minimum three yeah. rebuys, yeah. It shows. Look at the cash situation for the T's. They've had to rebuy a couple times now thanks to some decent ecos. There's K-Side with a huge first kill. He brings down Illogic Lucid Truth with a nice four burst. One in the pit is pinning War Angel. It's going to be a hard shot to hit that he does. Two bursts on graphic on the second try. Pretty Boy Floyd drops back and throws a nade probably way too deep to do any damage. He does survive with his life and K-Side now tucked behind the single box on the platform, or excuse me, the double box on the platform. Oh, long distance hello. And you know you cannot land a one tap M4 headshot. That was probably two consecutive M4 headshots that brought him down. Three T's left. They're on the far rotate and Candyman has not bit on the fake. He gets an early kill, knows the bomb's down, calls for his teammates to rotate. Smart play, you can see them all migrating now. Three, one, Mac J was the uh, the one to bring down the most recent and Bizzo the last by himself trailing coming through CT it looks like our number zero man with his red laminate will be stalking he'll come through mid and they've got K side watch in the window but his position is a tough one to hold I mean doing a 1v3 take right here is probably not in his best interest I don't know why he's even looking at the site like he's gonna try this he should probably just go for the save here well, he doesn't really necessarily believe in being overly cautious. I think Illogic is very confident in their shooting right now and think that they perhaps are the better team. He's got a beat on K-Side. He's doing good damage. He's brought him down to a couple. He needs to look to his left if he needs a chance there, but he cannot. Candy cleans it up. Cap Infinity tacks on its first of the half. Yep, and that's going to make the score 13-6 now, still in favor of Logic. And looking at the money, look at this. Uh, even after that buy round, this is how, how it, important it is to get those kills on the eco rounds because you see War Angel, Lucid Truth, or and Ghost are actually uh, looking really low in terms of money, and this is going to force Terrace into another save. It certainly will. That's a, that's a good way to build momentum if it's not already too late here. Let's take a look at our overall score. It's 13-6, to and that's, a, that's an intimidating one to climb out of. Yeah, it is. There's, uh, I mean, it is a T-sided map, so they do have the advantage here on the T-side, but uh, yeah, 13-6, quite the deficit to come out of, like you said, and we're seeing a mid-to-B here. Yeah, it is a mid-to-B. It's an all-mid-to-B. It's an eco-all-mid-to-B. Candyman decapitates the first one, loses truth, and the second one. The bomb gets dropped, traffic and clean up. Excuse me, Candyman will clean up, and Cap Infinity cleans up that eco round really nicely, only forcing one rebuy. Mid B, it kind of went untested, but the two players in the CT in the B site just uh, really had no problem defending it there against those uh, pistols with their M4s. Uh, I have one, I have one potential critique there. That's yeah. you know, rushing it is is one good way to do it. But if you make it mid to B and nobody contests you, why not just sneak up on the window and try to headshot somebody? Uh, the, the mid player may have seen them and just kind of let him go. I see. Um, I see. Yeah. All right. Well, two holding B. A double hold at B means that nobody is controlling mid. This calculated gamble is a good one because they just went through mid. It is unlikely that they're going to try a five through mid again. Four, number four man, excuse me, Mac J will drop out and look back to mid from the window. I like this play, Clay. I like, I like overly leaning toward B on this particular round because of that tendency. Yeah, it can work out in their favor. We're going to see if Bezo can get an op shot. Uh, he's kind of just watching mid. If he does get it, then it, the, the stack to B will definitely uh, work out. K-Side brings down War Angel, who is by the blue dumpster at long. Got one high on the box there. You see Candyman with the X-ray, don't you? I do see him. 
Yeah, that's a good spot. You, uh, it's one of those use it once and never use it again for the rest of the game kind of spots, but it is a good one. And he'll probably be benefit from his hiding spot with a kill there. He'll have to get a double, though. We know that two are in the hallways. The bomb is rounding around. Coming through T-spawn, it's going to be a four-man take it B, and we only have five-man Candyman there. I'm going to him. We have to watch him. He's waiting. 40 seconds remain. Here comes the entry. It's a slow play. It's a slow creep. The first one is a flash. He drops out of his position, which was probably so advantageous. A double, a triple. He cannot lock it up. A triple and us. an assist from Graphic right behind him. It's a really good play there. You know what? I was wrong to doubt him for dropping off. That, that seemed to have been the right play. Yeah, if he would have stayed up there, he would have been completely blind. Um, so dropping off probably was the smart choice. And they actually didn't see that spot, so he can use it again. Um, in, in later rounds. But that's going to make it 13-8 now. Uh, Cap and Infinity, once they got on those gun rounds, they're starting to come back here. That's right. That's right. It could it could have some ramifications. Early fire thrown by Kappa. He's chosen the right place and is burning Lucid Truth to death. 39 health and 20 for Ghost. Everybody's getting burnt alive. Candyman did everything needed this round perfectly, and he's got to be the MVP for this one. Not only did he literally burn everyone to a crisp, he was the one to finish off those kills. Biz was the last. He's in the hallways and just kind of wondering what exactly I should do. I'm probably going to get flanked. I can hear it. Here's the shots in just a moment. Here it is. He got dinked. Graphic did get dinked, but that was not enough. Cap Infinity has put up another round, Clay. The total is 13 to... 13-9 now after that Ooh. round. And, you know, Candyman, not only MVP for this round, that round, but possibly for the half because he's been doing very well. I mean, they've been doing a lot of B pressure, and he's been exceptional in holding down that site and making sure they get as many trades as possible. Uh, well, if you're trading, right? If you're if you're trading as many times as possible, it kind of reflects on you. Trading necessarily indicates that it's not a total success because you had to surrender a life. I do get your reference, though, and it, it shows. Look at the economy for the CTs. Though they're on a winning streak, they're forced to have a Bombas. Yeah. So Candyman Which, does have 12 yeah, Exactly. What? I don't know why they have what? a Bombas. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Candyman steps out. He's identified one of the top of Palm. Now a big telephone pole after the Counter-Strike Global Offensive update to the maps. He, uh, he'll he drop out. He, he identified more than one, and he's like, I, I don't want to deal with that. Everybody's kind of just clustered right by that two stack and that palm area bomb gets dropped it's a it's a hold and they're thinking that cap infinity is ought to push them i i get the logic that you're down a man so you want to try to equalize clay but if if you don't see a team with any aggressive tendencies chances are they're not going to push you yeah and i mean uh, with how important this game is uh you could probably bet that they're going to be playing as passive and as safe as possible i mean they have the one man advantage like you said there's absolutely no reason for them to push long a so i you know not really it's the fun. the smartest thing to be waiting there like that unfortunately it looks like elogic just shaved a bunch of time off the clock but ghost makes up for the lost time brings down k side with a violent ak headshot and a second attempt at graphic to do a crouching 1.6 era spray graphic big in the first half Loses his life, trades out. 2 2 left. Mac J and Candyman wielding up and M4 with practically practically full nades. And Nade, the first one, brought War Angel down to four. If somebody just. A, if a violent gust touches War Angel right now, he's practically dead, but he'll get a kill because he was a ninja. Mac J doesn't tell his teammate exactly what happened. He knows one's at the dumpster. It's a one on one. War Angel has to be perfect. He needs a, a headshot pretty much to get this done. There's the... Oh, Mac J didn't notice him. He's right underneath you at the elevator. Turn around, friend. This is really, really, really awkward. It just... Oh, my God! There you go. Illogic finally takes up another round here, and I feel for Mac J there. It was just... It was just so doable, and he missed maybe four chances to see his opponent. Yeah, that's so unfortunate. I think there was a random flash thrown by one of the terrorists that blocked out the sound of the guy who was coming up the ramp, which is why he wasn't he didn't hear War Angels jumping off with his wow. full health to, to get the ninja. But wow, that's uh, why you're the analyst there. I did not notice that flash. Great observation, Clay. Yeah, so that's going to make it 14-9, and uh, Elogic is another step closer to victory here. Looks like a default from the T's here. They're going to try to spread out and find kills wherever they can. Lucid Truth and, and Graphic are literally holding nades and looking at each other. The worst moment you could possibly have is either player as he comes up with the early kill. Ghost came out, tried to spray, though he had no idea where he was. Candyman trades out, and it's an even look for both teams. Rifles for everyone, with the exception of Bizzo, who is wielding an off. 
epic hold by a pretty boy, and he's got to get out of here if he wants to stay alive. He knows that the bomb is right at his feet. He knows the T's are coming from the other direction. He needs to slow them down so his teammates can get to him. Please throw a flash to slow them down. Otherwise, it's going to be all up to you. Here comes the engagement. War Angel steps up, looks at the double, knows Pretty Boy Floyd stuck in the corner. Pretty Boy Floyd thought he was protected. He was not. It's a two on two. Mac J is far behind, lands a huge long distance double tap, and Kappa Infinity will not be put away. They are still holding on. I thought that long flank by Mac J was going to be problematic, but the terrorists kind of slowed it down there after they got that initial kill. They didn't go straight for the, the platform, and they didn't try to force that bomb plant as quick as possible, so that kind of bit them in the, in the butt right there. But, um, I mean, other than that, good play by uh, the counter-terrorists. It was, it was a very good individual play. Unfortunately, Pretty Boy Floyd could have made that a much more attractive looking highlight play if he, if he realized that his butt was kind of sticking out here. An eco round, it looks like a five man split to mid. They had success with it the first time, so they're going to try it again. They'll come in and Candyman was just too prepared. Here comes the guillotine. This time, much more successful for E-Logic. They recover, I think, two weapons. No, Bizzo's going to go straight for the bomb plant and lose his chance at it. Ghost is right under the window. Here's the final kill of the round. The Executioner himself was graphic. 6-4. Kappa Infinity has a total of 11. Yep. And we're at 14-11 total now, aren't Correct. we? Correct. 14-11 is the score right now. And it uh, looks like, are we going to be on another save here for uh, E-Logic? No, they should be able to buy their AKs. I don't know if they're going to be able to buy the necessary smokes and this uh, is, flash This is a pivotal need. round. This is a huge, huge pivotal round. Not only winning this round would put up 12 for Cap Infinity, but a forced eco would plant to make it a 14-13 game at the end of this. But the logic does not care. They spray down K-side, and he goes down riding. Pretty Boy Floyd gets caught in that corner. Everybody knows that corner. You turn around, you think you can make it around the corner, and you get sprayed down. So this may be the tie point if Cap Infinity doesn't hold on to your graphic, brings down Lucid Truth, knows the bomb plant is in the smoke, sprays down, maybe tags maybe a little bit, but he needs to wait for his teammates considering how weak he is. Throws a far nade for somebody on the ramp, doesn't do any damage, the box will protect him. He jumps over, over! He sees War Angel as one of the goons, been stuck in the corner, two on one, Cap Infinity will turn this around and clutch the round. Candyman has one to beat, 58 is stuck down at long, out in open space, Here's the death, oh my god, here's the aim map practice that you put in for hours and hours. Candyman clutches and has the defuse. Cap Infinity forces the eco, but just barely. We have to decide whether or not that eco or that plant is enough to force eco or a force buy instead. They should be able to buy. Um, 33 on Lucent Truth, 32 on Ghost. Those two might not be sporting armor for this, but we'll see what they're going to be doing. I thought... Only having a, two smokes and two flashes was going to be problematic for the terrorists, but they used it to their advantage. They got that early flash out and then just put, used pure speed aggression to get out on long, got those early entry kills. But, uh, you know, a little bit of a disappointment there by point .58. He was uh, standing out in the open and long when he could have been in the safety of the pit, giving uh, Candyman a hard target to hit. But uh, he just didn't do it, and that probably cost him the round. We will thank him for making that error because suddenly this turns into a really dramatic finish. It could end up being 14 13 after this one. Mac J literally just mows everybody down, no questions about it. He has one of the Zion, and he kind of hears him. He knows that he's got one behind him. There's the kill. Point 58 goes down. Bizzo, the last one is in lower B. Pretty Boy Floyd has a good idea of where he is. He parachutes down and brings him down. Now it's 14 13, and we have a game. We do have a game indeed, and that save is going to be able to get a, a an op, excuse me, for Bizzo if he does choose. He's been do using it uh, more so on the CT side than he has on the T side, but he's going to stick with an AK and nades. So they're fully bought up here, and they should be able to get something going. Uh, I think they've been having a little bit more success at A so far, so I mean, if they do the, the pressure there like they did last round, it should work out good. Oh no! A side gets exactly to oh. <laughs> Self nade. You never wanna you never wanna get caught on camera in front of hundreds of people self nading. That's really disappointing. 158, round in the corner with his teammate. Those ones in the smoke brings down Pretty Boy Floyd. Two more in the smoke right around the elevator. They're gonna try to do a fast boost. No, they won't. They've uh, they've decided to scrap that idea because of how dangerous that would be. 
Lucid Truth has one in his sights at Goose, but he lets his teammate die before he brings him down. It may not even matter because Mac J is the last one versus four. He's got one more at the platform. He's got a kill to line up, but also one behind him. Turns on him. Gets the kill! Has one more. Oh my god. That was a sweet 180. Unfortunately, 15-13. Tie point achieved. Illogic one point away before winning Sevo Intermediate for Season 3. I wonder if they're going to go back to long A because they do know. It looks like K-Side is having a little bit of trouble on the defense there, especially with those early flashes going over long from the terrorists. Um, you know, they're, they're pretty easy to anticipate, and you can flick them, but they, if you're not ready for them, they can be troublesome. But they're doubling like, uh, up at long. Yeah. You're right. It does look like you called the right play there. You're in their heads, and if they do try it again, they're just going to run into the meat grinder because Kappa was ready to reinforce Ghost and Lucid Truth go down illogic. A Logic's point 58 will turn around and trade out. Thus far, it's a 4-2 to uh, trade-off in this round. Point 58 and War Angel, pretty good on gear. They've got all the nades they need to make a take happen, but they really got to equalize here. And they will not. K-Side with his P90 on the catwalk. There's, a, there's an application where a P90 is really powerful on a catwalk. Uh, he'll, he'll make it that much harder for War Angel. War Angel saw K-Side crossover. One more at the bomb, getting shot in the back. This round is just about over or, oh my god clay we may be going to overtime 15 14 this is going the distance here ghost and point 58 cannot buy but it and uh bizzo as well i think they got to go for a save here um and try to you know win out yeah this will this is a tie round so i actually got to buy I'm, I'm talking crazy it's a tie round it's a forced buy for everybody a couple ak's on the field of galil for point 58 and ghost and uh bizzo looks like he wants the pt50 not a bad choice here Early fire to stop the B push, but nobody was running into the bomb site. It looks like a 2-1-2, but nobody accounting for long here. And Pretty Boy Floyd, who has been pretty conservative here, may be doing the thing that may win this game. He may push. Long flash. War Angel throws a flash to the plat, but will be counter flashed himself. They'll back out. It looks like it's an inevitable 3-2 split. No early rotates coming. Yes, they are. The rotates are coming now. Mac J plays. Has Lucid Truth. Has another. And another. That's a triple. All the kills fall for Mac J and Candyman. One left. Bizzo cannot clutch if he runs into this spray. We're going to overtime. We are going to overtime. And hopefully the overtime doesn't go too long because we do have the main match coming up. But uh, either way, I do want to see how this first map is going to end with these two teams. All right. You are watching Sebo TV. We're about to go into overtime. Some of you may see a quick 30-second commercial. The rest of you who are still with us are here in for an epic one. God. If it's a grand finals, Ooh. it's got to be overtime, huh? It's got to be. That's how, that's It's the rules. <laughs> If, if grand finals must overtime yes absolutely <laughs> we promise we promise you guys who are here to see exertus versus complexity we will not we will not spoil that game for you we will definitely cast that one but we're going to get as much of this ot as possible overtime rules for those who aren't aware give them to us please brandon it is first to four full money both teams and you will switch at the half of three rounds it's pretty pretty tense Alright, so this should be starting soon. I don't know if Mr. Spangler is in the server going to be uh, running the config for these guys. I currently see no Spangler in the server. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Alright. They should know what to do. What was that blue desert eagle? What is that? Might be a new skin. We'll be waiting right now for admin intervention. Clay, what? A, there's the restart. What a comeback! What a comeback! Yeah, um, on the on the on the weak ooh. side. Yeah, it, it, both teams uh, winning out the weak side actually, which is a little strange. And the the score lines on each half were identical, so <laughs> uh, quite quite strange that we did see that. Uh, we just got in the restarted server, so um, this should be happening within two minutes, as that's the Go TV delay. Hopefully, they don't cut us off too early here. Because that would oh be my lord, that terrible. would be terrible. That would be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, wow. Um, I feel like there were there were some some rounds there where Elogic could have had a couple of them and they just kind of failed uh, in in terms of their entries. I mean, Candyman did a great job shutting down B for the most part uh, with his partner over there, and I think that that got in their head a little bit and forced him to work A more. Which uh, you know, it finally clicked for him in that if they start doing the speed aggression, they're going to have some success at A. But uh, they just started doing it too late into the into the half there, and I think that that was the main problem for him. It's odd that the speed play worked at long A, 
and not at B. It seems that the hold at B was much, much more staunch. Yeah, and I, I think that just might be attributed to the player who is playing at A. You know, we talk about personal match- matchups all the time. Uh, if you test a certain site and you're not, you're not having success, then you, it's time to look at other areas of the map. And they found it at A. The, you know, the player there was K side, I believe. And he just, uh, he was a little weak on his defense there. You know, that early flash was getting him. And he, he really just couldn't stop the three-man rush coming out the doors. Well... Now, it shall be all decided. Well, it could go to double OT. We should, ask, we should ask the viewers, because I want to do what you guys want to do. What happens if we, say, go into a double OT? Do we drop the game and move on? Or do we stay and watch it through its entirety? It's entirely up to you. I know our producers will tell us one thing, but they're not the ones streaming. You guys get the choice. Tell us. Do you want us to stay? Do you want us to move on if we go to double OT? Yeah. You tell me your opinion, Clay. Ah, uh, man, that's rough. <laughs> it's a rough one. I, I want to see how this ends, but the thing about it is that, you know, even if, well, if you logic doesn't want this, then it's going to go to uh, to another map. So I actually do kind of want to see how this is going to end. Okay. I The consensus has spoken. Lots of people are saying stay. I, I, I am totally, totally on board with that. I... I, I respect these players. I am very happy that they've put in the effort and the time and the, uh, to, to perfect their craft, not perfect their craft, but improve their craft. And I am more than willing to do this and show uh, them. I, I should have done a, a straw poll, but it's too late now. We are going live. <laughs> he goes says stay. I think if he says stay, he then stay. Maybe, maybe we stay because he's in the next match anyway. Here we go. Um, unless this is a fake live, we are live again. Again, it's Sevo TV. Again, I'm still Cotton. He's still Klops. And we are in a first to four overtime between Cap Infinity and Illogic. It's been an unlikely comeback. It's been two unlikely halves. Still, who cares? We got what we wanted. We got overtime. And we'll take a look, Clay. I got no minimap, but uh, it doesn't necessarily matter. I know it's a two on two split. I know that we've got three outside of long prepping to enter. Uh, and take advantage of that player. War Angel being the one playing the off look. He's not actually in the pit. He's actually uh, by the, uh, what do you think that low ledge is called? I don't have a name for that. Candyman looking up cat knows that he'll decapitate anybody that comes down the stairs, but there's nobody there. It's a pretty, oh, 58 had no idea. His head was exposed. Early entry kill there will force Bizzo to move into the window and try to hold onto the site. He needs to quick scope, but Mac J was too fast. Cap Infinity so good on the entry there. Mac J entered the site by himself. He did a head count thinking that I killed two. I could probably enter the site. Unfortunately, his math did not help him out there. Cap Infinity, a strong first round. A spray there for graphic was not good enough. War Angel now faces two. He has to clutch. I think he's got a full buy next round. He's got no reason not to try it. He's got two in the sight. Our three man approaches the door, knows one behind the big box. Looks at the back of the site, looks at the tons. Nobody peeking. Here's the first. Gets the first kill. Look at the tons, friend. He's got a chance. He gets shot in the back. Cap Infinity takes the first. And Clay, by the way, the first lead of the game. First lead indeed, and that entry by Mac J was just so good. A uh, little bit of a mistake there by point fifty eight, standing out behind the big box with his nade out, not realizing his head was exposed. It was an easy shot for Mac J, but then he got the nice kill onto uh, Bizzo as he came in to help. And then, like you said, he added up two people were in the site and figured that was the max. But no, uh, you know this team is playing two one two on their CT side, and if they realized that he shouldn't know there's probably another one lurking by. All right, the second peak by War Angel could have been badly punished there, but he makes it away. Five alive for the CTs, but Lucid Truth a bit wounded. Pretty Boy Floyd took a, a pretty good wallop on that uh, little exchange there. He's down to 42 as well. Candyman pushing up to the double doors. We know that there's someone on the other side. That's Bizzo, and the neither player really has an idea that the other player is that close. Maybe there'll be an exchange if Candyman decides to move all the way to the Xbox, which he has a teammate doing right now. Yeah, they're setting up for the smoke. Uh mid to B strat it looks like here. It does look like that. The bomb is slowly creeping backwards into the hallway since nobody has pushed in and we have three kind of holding B. It's a two on two that we've been talking about. It's unconventional these days, but it's really good at shutting down the three two split and it looks like that'll be the call for the round. It'll be all evened up if Illogic takes this one, but it's too close to write it off yet. Point fifty eight tucked in at the fence. Nobody likes this spot. Nobody checks it because it's so uncommon these days. 
There you go. Ghost will clean it up too. I don't even know that he needed his teammate to help. Case hides the last. It's going to be a 1-1. One, one. Um, there we go. Piercing kill. There you go. Case hide breaks down. It's 1-1. One, one. Just like we called it. Everybody alive. No force revive, but economy not too big of a deal. Tied up once again. That was a good round. I like how Bizzo decided to play up over in mid. Uh, as they did start doing that mid smoke to B strat, and then you saw Mac J come out not thinking anyone was going to be up close in his face, and it was a total surprise for him. He got dinked and got his face taken off pretty much right there, and it, it stopped the momentum going into that site. It definitely did. Here comes a potential rush to B. Three men really sprinting through that fire in the doorway will prevent them from ever advancing again. They had a bad experience. Excuse me, that was not them. Illogic had a bad experience with fire in the last half. Any man peers out through cat or excuse me through uh, palm and is jumping around not kind of kind of a just aloofly not really thinking too much about his safety we'll see if that punishes him three two split and inverted three two split three in the tunnels two out of mid and this has a running offer Candyman is splitting b with off 458 stuck in the corner gets taken down everybody's flashing in the doorway ghost has a chance to get a triple but he really does not even register a single kill kappa infinity if they win this round walk out of the half with 2-1, just like you drew it up. And that defense in B just, oh man, it's not looking strong right now. Um, you see all point fifty eight doing a little bit of a weak nade. He got kind of got caught with his nade out right there, and it was just... It may speed. not matter, but this is yeah. the end. This is really the end of the half, unless Lucid Truth... Uh... Or maybe OT later, double OT later. K-Side cleans it up, 2-1, Cap Infinity. The half switches now. Uh, Clay, Cap Infinity may pull off the epic comeback in two rounds. They might. It's looking that way. I mean, and you know what? I They're doing it through work of B, which honestly I would have figured they would have been hitting A since they know that in uh, it, during the previous uh, half, E-Logic was sporting that 2-1-2 split, which they were doing once again. And if you if you go up Cat, you know, smoke mid, go up Cat, uh, A is probably the weaker site uh, in, that, in that setup. So... You know, I, I thought they would have gone for that, but no, they kept, they stuck to B, and uh, I guess the defense there just wasn't good enough at, for a point fifty eight, um, and he he just uh, was a little weak in that side and gave up two rounds for him. Here comes the second half of OT. Kappa Infinity is one point away from the tie point. Two splitting in toward bomb site B's B tunnels. One coming up mid, and bomb trailing late comes also into B tons. It's going to be a B affair, surely, if this split is this obvious. We'll need fast rotates from the CTs if Kappa Infinity wants to survive. Candyman, who never used his double, his double box uh, perch up here, is going to use it this round, and it may be the difference in the round, Clay. It might be if they do another flash out, then it might have to force them down once again. But uh, yeah, right now they don't know about it. And, Here comes uh, the CT smoke, throws a fire for the door. Mac J will come back toward the site. Here comes the first kill. Candyman could not take advantage of his spot. A entry looks good for Elogic. They may take this round purely on the virtue that they've locked up the site so tightly with two CTs coming from A. Bomb plant surely going down now. It will be 2-2 at the end of this one up in the scaffolding right outside the window. May catch K-Side in the ear hole right there, buddy. So blind. There we go. Listen. <laughs> Lanes up to 2-2. It's, it's not... It's not clear, Clay. I have no idea where this match is going. It, it's it's really anyone's game right now. I mean, those were good reflexes on that entry into B. They saw... Uh, oh, so good. Yeah, so they good. saw Candyman up on that box, immediately adjusted, got that quick headshot, and then picked up the second kill. I mean, that was a textbook uh, mid to B strat right there. They got the smoke, got the entry kill in the mid and B, and they uh, only lost one person in the process. So, I mean, it, they made it look really easy. And look at this, they went for the speed aggression into A, but uh, they didn't have uh, K-Side playing up close. Oh, this time. Elogic finally gets an aggressive push, or Kappa Infinity, who was so religiously conservative, makes the aggressive push this time and gets punished badly for it. We have one up on the platform who must make the play of his season right now. He cannot. Pretty Boy Floyd will go down. K-Side standing in the cat, tried to bring another one down. This one will be a lead transition for Elogic if Candyman and Mac J do not win this. Mac J and Candyman now on the retake, coming from two different angles. One from the CT, one surely from Cat. Bomb is ticking, timer is aging. Candyman has one right in front of him, tries to no scope. War Angel will clean him up. Mac J the last at the elevator and will probably be spotted in just a moment. There's the shot. There's the lead change again. Illogic pulls ahead. It's, it's the game point, Clay. It's time. It's really, really time to show your championship medal.
Yeah, and right now, like I said, if I was a logic, I would think I would do another uh, quick pressure to A, long A once again, because, you know, they know that K-side is weak from the last half, and actually they played no one. Uh, what is going on? I think my CS it's... crashed. No, 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 no way. No. This, this cannot be happening. That hurry is up, so hurry terrible. Up. I'm going to narrate it as best as possible. Five terrorists in bombsite B. I'm sorry your client crashed. It's a three, it's a two, one, one hold. One pushed far long. Candyman is holding mid, smokes it to slow down the strat. It's an early op shot into B clay. Join up again. Here's I'm in, the I'm entry. In, I'm in, I'm in. Here okay, comes in. the onslaught. Only one alive in the bombsite B. It's our number six man, Candyman, who gets gunned down. It will be Illogic's win in just moments if they clean this up. Two men forced to retake versus four. We got two weak terrorists in Bizzo and point fifty eight. Lucid Truth will flash over to prevent the fast retakes. They seem to have heard our advice. They'll smoke the door and make it that much harder. Early kill, Bizzo. One left for the CTs. K-Side is the last. He's outside the door and was the gravity of the situation. He's forced into it. We'll walk through the smoke surely to his execution illogic wins it they are now your sibo wow. i am that is terrible grand finals champion that oh. just happened <laughs> it just happened and we missed the complete we completely missed the last round <sighs> that is freaking terrible blame valve i'm i cannot believe you crashed i cannot believe you crashed i can't believe it either that's that's atrocious, and I I apologize, guys. I don't I I can't even say anything about that. That's just complete crap.